Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, your day is going fantastic. We have several news stories to get through today. The first is a very small update for the 3800 XT, which, of course, is the Matisse refresh, which we believe is going to launch the 7th of July, although that has not been officially confirmed by AMD, much like the existence of these CPUs. But we do have a couple of leaked benchmarks for the 3800 XT, which is an 8-core 16 thread processor, which appears to just simply be a higher clocked variant of the 3800X. We don't believe there's any changes to, let's say, the cache or any other really big changes on the silicon itself. It seems like just because of a more mature process, they've been able to crank the clock frequencies up. There's a couple of interesting results. The first uh, has a boost frequency of 4800 MHz, slightly, slightly lower than that, 4.76 five if you want me to be precise but uh, there was also another result which was 4566 megahertz boost frequency and this meant that the cpu score for the lower clock variant was 9597 and hitting the 4.8 ish clock frequency uh, scored 10373 which was by the way achieved with 2933 megahertz memory now that's not atrocious by any stretch of the imagination it's way faster than running it with 2133 which would completely and utterly trash the results but um even so ideally with uh, zen 2 and ryzen 3000 you kind of want to clock at around 3200 megahertz that's like a sweet spot uh price to performance ratio with like pairing it with say a 3700x or a 3800 uh obviously with tight timings um you know that's a pretty good uh baseline for memory on the ryzen uh 3000 platform so it's not quite ideal and the clock frequency uh does help to of course make up for this even so a 3800 vanilla cpu a 3800x vanilla cpu if that made any sense gets around the 10,000 ish points once again in the same benchmark which is times by cpu score so it's a pretty decent upgrade in performance, but um, I'm going to be curious to see what the final clocks actually are capable of with hefty overclocking in mind. I wonder if we can get 5 gigahertz. Although, of course, with the Zen 2 architecture, it's not my clock frequencies necessarily stick to a particular clock speed. And clock frequencies can vary up and down like multiple times a second. But, switching from a small update, here's the real meat of this video, and that is AMD and several official comments concerning their next generation GPUs as well as the Ryzen 4000 series. Essentially, AMD have confirmed that Zen 3 and RDNA 2 will launch in late 2020, and it appears that RDNA 2 will launch prior to the next generation consoles. This, by the way, also seems to match what Mark certainly hinted in the Road to PS5 event. He said that uh, if you see AMD GPUs with uh, a lot of the features of the next generation consoles, then obviously their work has been successful. And to my understanding, both Sony and Microsoft have a substantial impact in AMD's roadmap after all, for example, on the Microsoft side of the equation, it's not surprising, but even before DirectX 12 Ultimate was uh, officially announced, they were kind of mentioning things like variable rate shading and mesh shading and uh, DirectX 12 ray tracing and all of this other stuff. So it was obvious that they wanted to have a product, i.e. a console, which would support this stuff officially. But anyway, getting back to the AMD side of the equation, this information has come to us from AMD CFO, Devinder Kumar. And once again, this is a pretty official statement because it was made to the Bank of America Security Global Technology Conference. And he said, and I quote, there's a lot of excitement for Narve 2, or what our 
fans have been dubbing as a Big Nave, and it is a Halo product. Enthusiasts love to buy the best, and we are certainly working on giving them the best. He also reiterated that the products would be on track to launch by late 2020, although declined to give an exact release date. Uh, so it appears that Ryzen 4000 series, as well as the RDNA 2, which we can presume is going to be called RX 6000, that's what I was told anyway, they're all going to launch by, let's say, Christmas-ish. We should basically have a very good understanding of what's happening with the roadmap. This is actually contrary to another rumour that was swirling, um... For AMD, where they had basically insinuated that Zen 3 could be pushed back until next year. Although, to be fair, the rumour also said it was possible it was going to be really late this year that uh, Zen 3 would launch. Either way, uh, Kamar has also stated that RDNA 2 architecture will go through the entire product stack. And we know... Very little about Narve 22, there is some speculation that it's going to more be for professional usage, but 21 and 23 appear to be the GPUs which are aimed at gamers, although of course there will be different variations of them. We don't officially know the specifications of the GPU, we believe it has 80 compute units, and there is quite a lot of evidence that the GPUs will clock rather uh, high. A couple of reasons for this, both next generation consoles have quite ludicrously high clock frequencies, um, with the PlayStation 5 hitting around 2200 megahertz, the Xbox over 1800 megahertz, which considering it is a console, and considering that it has 52 compute units, is very impressive indeed. And also, of course, we have that slide which uh, demonstrates that the performance per watt scaling with RDNA 2 is going to be pretty damn high. So I wouldn't be surprised if the GPU is capable of around 2000-ish megahertz, maybe even higher, for the clock frequency. Uh, especially if you go with kind of custom variants of the card, and AMD themselves have stated that the um, reference design isn't going to be as crappy, which is always good, because AMD's reference designs kind of make you sad just by looking at the darn things. So they, they've not been ideal. Um, even the RX 5700, which I reviewed on the panel from AMD, I said that the card was pretty damn good, but the reference design, not so much, which is definitely a shame. Obviously, there are reasons that AMD have gone this route. One of them was simply because of the cost issues. If they start to uh, implement uh, more elaborate cooling, it does increase the cost of the card. There's a whole thing you could do. Um, there's like literally an entire essay you could uh, write regarding the issues with AMD's GPUs. Typically, a big problem is that they come out of the sweet spot in terms of clock frequency and efficiency. So it's essentially a curve, and they get to this point of diminishing returns where you need to basically have a nuclear reactor to power the GPU and get it up those extra 50 to 100 megahertz. And given um, the GPU wasn't exactly amazingly efficient anyway, Remember, it was on the 7NM process, and NVIDIA was still kicking their butts in terms of efficiency simply because of the architecture. The good news is AMD are making a lot of strides here with RDNA 1 and then 2. RDNA 2 is said to be a similar jump from um, the Vega architecture so uh, to RDNA 1, so that is very impressive. And I recently covered um, that one of my sources had told me that one of the reasons behind this is a lot of the engineers which worked on the power efficiency uh, for the Zen architectures had been very much succeeding with RDNA 2. Uh, and you, this was actually something that AMD themselves had stated, that we would be seeing some of the individuals who were responsible for that moving to uh, uh, the Radeon Technologies group, but apparently... Uh, RDNA 2 is the first architecture, at least according to what I've been told, that really have kind of demonstrated their work. It's extremely interesting to me that they've stated that it's going to go through the entire product stack. So I wonder if eventually we will have very low-end cards which use RDNA 2. And things are a bit confusing because recently I did report on almost a refresh of the 
RDNA 1 cards which appears to be in the works as well. Total speculation here, but I imagine AMD will release the Halo product first, the card that it believes the kind of market really wants. Because ultimately, yes, most folks can't afford to spend like a thousand bucks or simply don't want to spend a thousand bucks on a GPU. And quite frankly, I can't blame them. But when obviously reviewers and enthusiasts get hold of those cards, those numbers are kind of what makes the headlines. A definite benefit AMD has over AM, um, over NVIDIA is that, uh, of course, their hardware is going to be in the next generation consoles, which you can imagine will give them a bit of a leg up when it comes to performance optimization by developers. But then NVIDIA do not go down without a fight, and I suspect that it's going to be a lot closer this time around. So, in the comments, let me know who will provide... Will it be Mama Sue or will it be Papa Jensen? And switching to Intel, we have a couple of small updates here. The first is an 8-core Rocket Lake engineering sample CPU has been discovered. Credit to, to Rogame again, actually, for this particular discovery. And the score is almost half of what we saw with the... Um, with the uh, 3800 XT, it scores just under 5,000 points, which, to be honest with you, is even lower than what you would expect an 8600K to score. That usually scores around the 5,200, 5,300, obviously, if you overclock it a little bit more, which is only a 6-core, six 6-thread six processor. But you have to remember that this is an engineering sample. The clock frequency may not even be reported correctly. Apparently, it's running at 4300 megahertz. But with engineering samples, early BIOSes, yada, 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 well, whether it's boosting correctly and how many cores are hitting that clock frequency and so on, it's extremely difficult to know. The biggest takeaway to my mind with this is just that the samples are continuing to be spurted out um, at a relatively fast rate. We're seeing several engineering samples now that from the Rocket Lake series, which is definitely good. Although, quite frankly, we still know very little about the actual underlying architecture. Uh, we saw an image, which I believe it was videocards.com put up first which stated that, of course, it does uh, sport the XC architecture. There are numerous enhancements to overclocking, uh, some of which we've actually seen in the temp generation CPUs. It does support PCIe 4, yada yada, but they've also stated that there is a new uh, processor core architecture. So whether that means there's some type of refinement to the Skylake architecture, which I, I guess technically would mean a new architecture, or whether it's a backport, that's still yet, not yet clear to my to my knowledge anyway. Either way, these CPUs, uh, sorry, this CPU has 8 cores, 16 threads, and it's unclear whether there's going to be a higher core count model or not. Rumour has it that 8 cores, 16 threads will be the highest, but uh, until I see official confirmation from Intel that that's the case, especially given we've seen Comet Lake at 10 cores, well, yeah. And I will also take just a moment to mention about a supposed roadmap which has uh, popped up. This was on the ROG forums. And to call it a roadmap is extremely generous because ultimately it doesn't really show us too much. It basically seems to indicate, though, that we will not see any of the 11th generation CPUs launched this year, which was a rumour. So it appears like Q1 at the earliest, next year of course, for the 11th generation CPUs, aka Rocket Lake. Oh, and given Rocket Lake does support the 400 series chipset, at the very least you do have that... Um, I guess you could say kind of confidence that if you do jump onto the 10th generation, you can at the very least use your motherboard for that uh, upcoming series of processors. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, I'm going to be very curious how Rocket Lake ends up performing. I suspect that it possibly will take the single core performance crown from Zen 3, although 
there's still a lot of ambiguity in terms of release schedule because if Zen 3 launches, that's I'm just going to pull a, a, a month out of my ass here, but let's just say Zen 3 launches in November um, or October, November time. There is actually rumours that it will launch earlier than that, but let's just say uh, October-ish, November-ish. Then let's say that Rocket Lake launches a bit after that. Let's say in Q1 next year. Once again, this is just speculation on my part. Um, I will be curious to see what happens with the Zen 4 architecture because there are so many rumours that... Uh, we will see a Zen 3 refresh, which obviously we discussed recently, or whether Zen 4 will be going ahead for the desktop. I suspect gaming-wise, we probably won't need more than 8 CPU cores uh, for a while. Um, the only big kind of quandary is whether decompression for large amounts of data uh, from the SSD will increase the utilization of the CPU. I do think, though, simply because of the higher clock frequencies compared to a console, PCs could potentially just mitigate some of that anyway. But I think that just about does it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. The normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And there will be lots of content which will be upcoming on the channel, including a PC build, which I'm about halfway through filming, and some other really fun stuff as well for the next generation consoles, which I'm in the process of writing a script for, and, well, just lots of stuff in general. With all that said, thanks very much for watching the video and all of the support. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.